My GM at the time with the Clippers calls me, hey man, who the fuck is Jack Harlow? <laughs> I said, he's my friend, he's a rapper. Wow, what's the problem? I'll call you back. So he hangs up on me too. So my agent and my GM, they done hung up on me back to back. I'm like, what the fuck is going on? Open my phone. Twitter is going crazy. Lou Williams sneaks out of the bubble to go to Magic City. <laughs> oh, yeah. if they would have brought Magic City to y'all, y'all would have been happy. That's all we was missing. It's like NBA University with no women. I heard so many funny stories about how they was trying to get women in the bubble. They was trying to sneak girls over the happy. game. It, it just wasn't a realistic thing. They had that shit shut. I would have got somebody in. Shaq, it wasn't no. happening. Bro, I'm from Orlando. I, I have Disney contacts. I would have got somebody in. <laughs> What is up? What is good? How you living? How you feeling? How you doing? It is the LEFKOE man on the big podcast with Shaq where we always do it big. And flanking the big fella today, I start off to his left. A comedian, a TV, and a movie star. He's been a wide receiver, a councilman, and an FBI agent. He's taught us how to be a player and invented the phrase booty call. Give it up for Bill Bellum. That's not a bad intro. That ain't bad. And on the other side, on the other side, Shaq, let me give him his due, a certified bucket getter. From high school to the league, this man is the NBA's all-time leading scorer off the bench. He's got three six Man of the Year trophies on the mantle. From MTV Cribs with Bow Wow to Drake songs, <laughs> the man has always been popping. Ain't no Lou Williams. All day, Lou! <laughs> What's happening? Hey, you forgot. Shaq, take it away. Hey, you forgot to say one thing about Bill Bellman. He's also a lawyer. Let me tell you why. He got Suge Knight out of jail. Turn that camera around for me. <laughs> Turn that camera around for me. This camera right here, yeah. Suge Knight is free. Turn the camera around. Turn the camera around. <laughs> Bill Bellamy's manager. Suge Knight is out. Yep, Suge Knight is out. Streets. If you ever want to do real comedy, come to Bill Bellamy Productions. You want to be with some real comedians? You want to really make it big? Come to the road. <laughs> What's up, guys? Thanks for coming. Oh, I appreciate man, it. it's a pleasure, it's a big pleasure. dog. Lou, Always. Lou, I'm going to start with you. I owe you an apology. What happened? I didn't know you came from high school. Yeah. What you thought I went to school? I don't know. <laughs> listen, I, I, I don't know how you prepare for the game, but I never looked at other people. And, and plus, you was a guard, mm -hmm. so you weren't my responsibility. You, you was Kobe and, yeah. and D-Way and all that. So, like, when, when uh, he just said straight out of high school, I was like, damn. I didn't know that either. That's yeah, super know that. dope. What, what, what high school you came out of, Lou? Uh, I went to South Gwinnett High School. Wow. Here in Atlanta? Yep. Yeah, I went to South Gwinnett. Thank you. Uh, you know, I, I may be the dumbest Hall of Famer. <laughs> uh, but you, you got a lot going on, Shaggy. No, you ain't got time I, I, to be worried about what everybody else got going on. <laughs> but, but you know what? I put you on that list. The list was my favorite players who I never messed with. Notice how when you came out to pick and roll, I was never there. Notice how when you came to the hole doing all that shit, I never put you on your ass. No, you did. Yes, you no, did. I did. No, yes, I did. No, I did. I did yes, not. Yes, you no, did. I, I tell this story I all the not. time. You fucked me up. You was in Phoenix. I got mad. They didn't call a foul on Steve Nash. Okay. So I got mad and I kind of chucked him. And the very next play, I came to the hole and Shaq politely just guided me down. He yeah, said, politely. Hey, don't see? fuck with my point guard. <laughs> see, that, no, <laughs> see, my but, but see, that's my point. It was polite because you, you, so. The worst one I had to do one time was Vince Carter. I used to love Vince Carter. Like, I'm not, I'm not sure I'm going to pick around. I want Vince to go baseline, go past me and just do something. The one day, he, he, we in Miami, and he bounced that motherfucker, and he looking like he had to dunk on me. And I'm like, uh -oh. so I grabbed him by the fucking neck and just threw him on the ground. <laughs> <laughs> and I told him, I said, Vince, really? But hold on. The next play down is when uh, uh, Jason had lost it, and he wrapped it around, and then he met Alonzo Mourning at the rim. Oh my God. And he threw all, oh, yeah, he, he gave a yeah, lot of That's crazy. Mm. But you put a you put a target on you because you was like, ain't no, ain't no dunking on me. So at that time, that was Vince. If anybody was gonna do it, it was gonna be Vince that was gonna try it. I was scared of Vince. 
T Mac, Cole, because you know that would have been like if, if like after I left, if Cole would have been, you know that would have been worldwide news. Yeah, forever. yeah. Oh my I was god. Like, I can't let them. You ever gonna play in the big three? If it makes sense, I would. I mean, we've tried. We've tried a couple times, and um, I'm trying to get on the same page with Q where we can where it could just make sense for me. You know what I'm saying? I made a couple couple minor requests. Uh, you know how we are. We just used to. We used to certain things, and so I just I made some small requests and seeing if we can get on the same page of thinking. But I coach AAU with my girls. I spend a lot of weekends with them, and so for him to pull me from that, it gotta it gotta make, it gotta sense. make sense. So you're a coach now. I am a coach. You can put that on the. You can put that Add on that. the. Yeah, you can put that. I love coach. it, man. This is my this is my second year coaching coaching young women's basketball. Um, my daughter caught the bug. And um, I started helping her coach a little bit, and the more and more I was there, it just it pulled me in, and so I, I started coaching. And I'm now I'm full time coach Lou, man. So I oh, love. Oh, that's it. so dope. Speaking yeah. of coaching, Milwaukee Bucks coach, they were thirty and 13, 30 and sixteen, and he got fired. Yeah, we we've both been in the business of basketball for a long time. What do you think about that move? It was interesting because I didn't. You know, we heard rumblings about it before he even got fired. It was like, oh, we don't even know if he's doing a good job, this and that. I wasn't really invested in in what they had going on. But you heard the, you know, you heard the rumblings before that. I, I was curious to know why they even made the decision to fire him. And they was like, well, they got a thirty and thirteen record. I'm like, sure, but you, them, them dudes, they can they can have that record without anybody standing over there. You know what I'm saying? They talented enough to be thirty and thirteen with the guys that they have, and I think they got championship aspirations. And maybe, you know, A.G. just probably wasn't the guy for the job and, and Doc could come in and bring his expertise to the table. But now, like we said, you put a target on your back. Doc Rivers is one of those coaches where the media train is going to come with Doc. Absolutely. You know, so how Milwaukee was able to be quiet and kind of under the radar and not have a lot of controversy and, and being criticized, that comes with Doc. You know, Doc is a, he's one of those coaches that you bring in to win championships. And when you bring that type of coach in, your expectation level goes from here to there with a Doc Rivers as your coach, man. So I was, I was, I was curious to know why they fired him, but you know now it's 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 go time. You know you be you you begin as one of the quiet teams to you're gonna be talked about every single day, every day. And you're gonna have an expectation level now. The Big Podcast with Shaq is presented by The General. You know your boy Shaq loves The General. Before the league, before the rings, before I got my big break, I've been rocking with The General. The General has been offering quality coverage for 60 years, and now they want to give you a break when you need it. With flexible payment options to keep you covered, the ability to pick your due date, and low rates and low down payments. Visit thegeneral.com to get a quote. That's thegeneral.com to get a quote today. And it wouldn't be the big podcast if it wasn't presented by The General. Shaq, I do have a question for, for Mr. Bellamy. It is the general big break question. Mr. Bill Bellamy, who gave your first big career break? If you were to look back, who gave it to you? Russell Simmons. And the reason I said Russell Simmons is because uh, uh, Def Comedy Jam platform was so big for us, you know what I mean? All of us were like funny comedians in our area, but we never had anything like Def Comedy Jam to kind of give us a stamp that we the new funny guys, you know what I mean? And for comedy, Def Comedy Jam was like the rucker. Any athlete, basketball player had to play in the ruck at some point to solidify that you was one of those dudes. And I feel like in my generation, Def Comedy Jam was definitely the jump off for everybody. Look at all the stars that got made. Jamie Foxx, uh, DL, Chris Rock, Dave Chappelle, uh, Sid, uh, Bernie. I mean, just think Chris uh, Tucker. Just look at all these, Martin, all these stars came from one platform. So I shout out to Russell for that. So Shaq and I were talking on Tuesday night. He's got a lot of untold stories. And so I'm wondering, Bill Bellamy's sitting there. This is for Lou and Shaq. Lou, has there ever been a celebrity sitting courtside that made you play differently? That made me play differently? Um, like it either, either inspired you, made you nervous, got you excited. Was there ever somebody in the building where you were like, I need to show out? No, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I wouldn't say made me nervous or 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 anything because when we on the court that's our shit that's right. our building you right, know what right. i'm saying you're they lying. came to see us you lying you know what i'm saying no nah, not really like 
It might have been some women in the crowd, probably well, some regulars. They, 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 but that, a, well, that counts too. That yeah, counts, that counts. Too. Is there no, a no, no. Yeah, you know, that's just that's just no, 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 no that's, regulars. That's I want. Yeah, I that's, want that's, names. That's playground no, mentality, right there. Want me to go first? Yeah, there's two. <laughs> Sherry Headley mm. from Coming to America. We at the Garden, and I'm shooting Rito, and she walking down. I damn near shoot an air ball. No. And we make the eye contact, and she give me the little wink. So now I'm like. Uh-oh. I go back to the huddle. I said, I don't give a fuck what play they call. Throw me that motherfucker every time. <laughs> I'm getting that motherfucker. I'm dunking. I'm looking for him. I've got my legs up. I'm talking shit. I'm pointing. I'm like, this my shit up from Jersey. And then after the game, she was in the back with her husband. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm saying, man. You gotta- I was like, damn. All, mm-hmm. all that for nothing. <laughs> hey, hey. And, the second, and, and, and hold on. The second one was Halle Berry. So I'm, I'm dribbling and I see her walk in. I call a timeout. I'm nervous. My fucking heart going, do, 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 do. I shit right, I call a timeout. I said, hey, man, Halle Berry here to see me throw me that. Man, she ain't, man, shut the fuck up. She here to see me throw me. So I'm showing off. I never got to meet her. But one time, me and, and one time, me and my cousin Kendall, we used to go to Four Seasons on fucking Doheny. So me and him in the elevator, we're going to a suite. Halle Berry gets in the elevator. My stuttering kicked all the way, and I was like, <laughs> and I just hear the bells go ding. I think the elevator would be yeah, awesome. but, but, but they go ding, and I'm like, <laughs> and so we get to like the sixth floor. She's like, "All right, Shaq, nice to see you." And she get off, and Kenny start punching. You stupid motherfucker! You was always talking about, <laughs> bro, bro. It was me, him, and her. And listen, this has to be and, ninety and, something. Yeah, this is ninety something. I don't and even listen, think Holly Berry a real person. I've never seen her before. You never seen no? her, bro. Never let, seen let me tell you something. Never, never let me tell you something. From game. TV to real life, it's the same, yeah. bro. She got in the elevator by herself, and I'm like, and my boy tapped me. He's like, yeah, there you go get Because you, you know me, though. I'm from Jersey. I'm smooth with it. But my shit was like. <laughs> I just, bro, I just Emily couldn't Wilson, get it out. Years back, I was on the elevator. Mm-hmm. It opened up, and Beyonce and her mom get on the elevator. So it was me, Beyonce, her mom on the elevator. I'm, hey, how you doing? I'm good, thank you. I That's shut it. Shut the fuck up. I'm stay out of that, yeah. Yo, it's, I remember when I was on MTV, and um. Hallie was had a movie or something coming in. This is the first time I seen her in person. And I was like, I ain't never seen nobody this fine. Like, like she literally is fine like that. Like, so I'm looking at her, but I'm I gotta ask questions, but I'm trying not to stare. It's weird. I'm like, I'm I want to go like this. <laughs> Cause I'm like, your skin this perfect, like your teeth is. this white. It like crazy. it was crazy. And then afterwards, she was with Dave Justice. I was hot. Yeah, I was, I was, I was, about I was like, yo, this one I had just got my money too. I was like, I can handle that. <laughs> How did you? I was in the game at the time. Go ahead, Adam. I was going to say to Bill, what is the greatest athletic performance that you've been a fan at and witnessed in person? What's number one? My number one? Oh, wow. I I think number one would be when Mike gave the Nets 55. You know what I mean? How the fuck we first cousins? In? B, B, no, no, no. I'm gonna get to you. No, no, I'm gonna get to oh, you. Y'all cousins? Yes. Come on. In real life. In I'm real not life? gonna give you. Life. I'm not gonna oh, give you the one off top, Shaq. No, no, no. See that? That ain't right. Come on, man. Let me give you the every, one that the one that first one that was crazy. Every time they ask me my top comedians, I'm you, always you, thinking you about. You always say cat. No. I don't. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, I don't know. He forget. <laughs> See, that's how you know he lying. He be like, "Cat, cat, will you?" You forget about me every time. You know what I respect about Bill? Bill has always been that that cousin that's been on his own. Like we never asked him. Never needed nothing. No, never yeah. needed nothing. Cause like he always, he always, he always had to fly gear. He been Bill Belly as long as I've been yeah. living. Thank yeah. you, yeah. Lou. No, no, Thank yeah. you, you too, <laughs> Lou. Fresh out of high school. Goddamn. But yeah, I, I remember. I remember the first time seeing him in Terminal D in Nook. Yeah. He talked about me like a dog, and then <laughs> well, hold on, he talked about me like the dog. So I, I was gonna meet him in the back. I'm like, yo, I'm from Jersey. He's like, bro, you know we cousins. I said, we're not cousins. And he made the call, and I called my mom. I said, you know, she's like, yeah, that's your cousin. Yeah, so, it's crazy, yeah, right? It why, don't, why don't people know that? They do know it, but they he only talks about bring me, it like up. he always had this fucking joke on. He's like, yo, you know, and I tell people I'm Shaq cousin. Like, he my cousin too. That's a that, that's a terrible joke, by the way. No, it's really it, it is. But they yeah. always think I'm your cousin. You my cousin too, fam. <laughs> they be acting like I ain't nobody. I was funny before he could play. <laughs> he had to learn basketball. I was born funny. So, so Lou, when, when you came in, mm-hmm. I told a story the other day. It was only one guy I was afraid of. 
and this was early. This was like, I mean, after after one or two times, I I, I kind of came back there. I was terrified of Michael Jordan. I don't know why. Cause maybe maybe it was because I saw him on the posters or whatever. But like when we went to Chicago, the old Chicago arena, remember when you had to walk up them steps? I don't know if you remember that. And they said his name, and like he did those first couple moves. I'm like, man, this motherfucker's perfect. Any of those guys that you played with or played against, like, yeah, it was, it was different for me because it was AI, but I got drafted to the Sixers. So all of my all of my fear was like, well, I ain't got to deal with him. This is my teammate. You know what I'm saying? And just to have that experience and him embracing me because I was going into it like, damn, I got to compete against this dude every day and this is my idol. He's the reason, like, I got tattoos, how I carry myself. Like, I really looked up to this dude and, and to be his teammate for the first three seasons of my career was, was mind-blowing to me, you know what I'm saying? And, and getting to know him as a person, getting to know him outside of basketball, he was one of those people that put real fear in my heart, you know what I'm saying? Another person was... Because when I came in 05, this was still AI, Stephon Marbury, mm-hmm. Jason Kidd, Steve Nash, Darren Williams. Wow. Uh, Chris Paul came in with me. It was a very legendary point guard heavy time. So every night for me was just like eye opening to be a 17, 18 year old kid playing against all these legendary guards, man. That was, that was. That's 205. 05 was hot. Did you get hazed? No, nah, I got. I was protected. You didn't get hazed that one time. I didn't get. I didn't get hazed. I was. I, hazed, I was protected. I hazed Kobe I was AI's one time. personal yeah. rookie. I hazed Kobe one time, and it's like the FBI came to my room the next morning. No way. She is like he off limits. <laughs> I was like, what you mean he off limits? Like he off limits? I said, like, what you mean? Like, bro, he off limits. That's how I was. Yeah. That's how I, I wasn't yeah. Kobe, but AI yeah. told him like Jerry West came down, Mitch Cup down, Magic brought his punk ass down there. They're like, hey man, leave him alone. Like, right. I remember, and, 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 and the only reason why I didn't mess with him because when I got to Orlando, they, they Scott Scott told me lift, 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 lift his bags. I said, I don't, I don't do that, bro. Right. He said, you a rookie? I said, no, no, I'm not a rookie. I'm Shaq. I ain't lifting no motherfucking bag. If you going, I said, hey, if you think about making me lift these motherfucking bags, you better get the motherfucking taste out your mouth. Well, part two of my, <laughs> or part two of my killer spree. <laughs> <laughs> All right, speaking of, of taste, uh, pause. Um, Lou, greater honor, your third six men of the year trophy or getting a flavor of wings named after you at Magic City? Probably, uh... And tell us that story, too. You know what? Please. Yeah, you know what? It's probably going to be the flavor of wing because that seems like it, it, it birthed the nickname. It birthed Lemon Pepper Lou, which is crazy because that happened in the 15th year of my career, and that's the only thing people remember about oh me all God. of us. <laughs> you know? I remember that, though. No, so what happened? He went to Magic City even, doing the book. Let, let, let him tell the story. I gotta tell you, Diesel, it wasn't even, it's not even interesting. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Because that shit no, went, people that shit went super this viral. This what happened, my, so. And, and, but my, hold on. My, and I had to do something I never wanted to do. I had to go in on you. I mean, because it was going viral and everybody was talking about it. It was a weird it. time. Yeah. It so, was a weird time. So, everybody everybody so has. We want to hear the story from you. Go ahead. But I, uh, my OG had passed away. Uh, my business partner, his dad, is responsible for a lot of. Um, stuff I've done in the community and everything. He passed. He passed away. So they cleared me to leave the bubble and go to his funeral. Right. And so when I got home, I went to the wake. So mind you, I've been. We've been living in a hotel. Hotel food. Ain't no special food coming in and out. Right. You eating whatever the fuck is on that on the menu on that menu in the hotel until they figured out later on how to start getting food into the bubble. So go to the wake. The wake is a block away from Magic. Now, if you know Atlanta culture, we eat at our shit. It ain't about shit for real. We eat, these are our favorite restaurants. I've never been. Cap. <clears throat> <laughs> so I'm like, yo, I'm a block from Magic. We leave here. I'm going to go grab something to eat. Then I'm going to go and get out. I get to Magic. Mind you, it's 4.35 o'clock in the afternoon. So all of the hours partying and all that, that's bullshit. So I'm there at 5 o'clock. NBA did a whole investigation. It was eight people total in Magic City. Five of them was with me, by the way. Right. I got my mask on. I think I'm doing everything responsible, this and that. So Jack Harlow walks in with 
uh, one of my partners. So I'll give you a backstory on my relationship with Jack Harlow. I've known Jack since 2017. I met him. He was a regular white kid. I didn't know nothing about him. My man told me he did music. I'm like, cool. He started coming around. Fast forward three years later, he's the biggest star in the world. Right. Number one song. He walks in. I'm like, yo, man, congrats on everything, bro. Like, you made it, bro. Like, Came up. yeah, yeah it, it's happening, bro. You got the number one song, this and that. So we excited to see each other. He like, yo, you, we let's take a shot. Oh. Me and Jack take a shot. So he like, man, you think we could take a picture? He was like, you think it'd be cool we take a picture? I said, I don't see why not. I got my mask on. You got your mask on. Let's take the picture. Take the picture. Don't think nothing of it. Jack go about his business. I go about mine. My food come out. I leave. I go home. Next day, I, I wake up. And that's the extent of the story, by the way. Right. That was my time in Magic City. <laughs> go home. Oh, he's on fire. Yeah, I go home. Next morning, my agent called me. He said, uh, we got a problem. I said, what's up? He said, I'll call you, he said, I'll call you back, but uh, L. Frank is about to call you. L. Frank was my GM at the time with the Clippers. L. calls me. Hey, man, who the fuck is Jack Harlow? I said, he's my friend. He's a rapper. Why? What's the problem? I call you back. So he hangs up on me too. So my agent and my GM, they done hung up on me back to back. Lawrence Frank. Yeah. From Lawrence Jersey. Yeah. So they, yeah. I'm like, what the fuck is going on? Open my phone. Twitter is going crazy. Lou Williams sneaks out of the bubble to go to Magic City. <laughs> well, that's what I saw. I was happy is, for you. Yeah, yeah no, I, I was went. too. They said I snuck, <laughs> I snuck out of the bubble. There was a doctor traveling with me. Because this was a time you had the COVID test two, three times a day. Right. It was a doctor traveling with me. It didn't sneak out of the bubble. I had permission to leave. Mm. I didn't have permission to go to Magic. I give them that. But I wanted something to eat. You know what I'm saying? And so. And the wings are good. So what ended up happening was Jack posted the picture. So people started going crazy like, Lou is out of the bubble. So when Jack realized that, he deleted the picture and said, y'all chill. That was a, that's an old pic. I'm just showing love to my homie. But I had the bubble mask on. Oh, yeah, yeah. It said NBA. Yeah, yeah, NBA yeah. I had 30. the NBA bubble mask on. Yeah, yeah. And he tried to cover for me. And it just, then it just took a life of his own. And it, I, it was a slow media week. And they just yeah, fucking I lit was me on fire. I up when I heard that. Because I was like. I, I heard I, everything. I was yeah. irresponsible. Hey, shit, I'm a clown. Dog. Like, I didn't know you at the time. Man, Kendrick Perkins like, got problems to this day no, because of that. No, you know, Greg, I didn't know you at the time. I was like, he always been cool with me. I always see him out. Yeah, that shit true. <laughs> it's true. Like, I, uh, but if you've yeah, been in the it, bubble, it, it, it makes <laughs> sense to me. Like as as a person that heard the story, I'm like, that makes sense. Like, damn, being in a bubble, tra you go back home. I mean, come on, go get some wings uh, and see I'm some going, things. I'm going right back to the bubble the, ne the so the next day. So I'm like, shit, I'm going to get some food I want. Like, I'm going to have me a, a meal that I, I look that forward you to. Want. You dig what I'm saying? And I, The funny thing is, what That's people don't know is I... I was back in the bubble on, I want to say Friday. I was already back in the bubble in quarantine. And my agent was like, Monday, it's going to be a shit show. He was like, when, when everybody come back from the weekend be crazy. and the media open back up, I'm telling you it's going to be a shit show. So you handled it well, though. You Monday really morning hit, and I was on every single news station Everybody was just dogging the shit out of me. Yo, you see, and, and mind you, you was I, reckless. But what was crazy was <laughs> I was already on day four of quarantine. So I'm sitting there watching it like, they like, has he even returned to the bubble yet? And I put my team at risk in this. I'm <laughs> like, what? <laughs> but Adam Silver, he told me, he said, Honestly, I don't think you did anything wrong, but I am gonna make an example out of you because I don't think I don't need these guys to think that this shit, they can do this shit. Right. And they just everybody would want to me to the wolves. So what happened? Ten games, twelve games? Nah, I, no suspension, no fine, no nothing. I just quarantined. Oh, okay. But that's that's what I'm saying. There's, what there's was that like quarantine? Like you just... being locked in a hotel room, motherfucker sliding food to your door like you're an animal. Yeah, it was crazy. No, nah, that was a wild. And it feel like that was a long time ago. That was a wild time, bro. Yeah. When I'm looking for a great assistant, I want the best of the best. My championship career wasn't built with mediocre teammates. So that's why when I need to hire, I use ZipRecruiter. ZipRecruiter's matching technology shows you qualified candidates immediately after you post your job. In fact, 
Four out of five employers who post on ZipRecruiter get a quality candidate within the first day. See for yourself. Go to this exclusive web address to try ZipRecruiter for free. ZipRecruiter.com slash B-I-G. Again, that's ZipRecruiter.com slash B-I-G. ZipRecruiter, the smartest way to hire. Trust me, I use it myself. All right, so the incredible thing about doing a podcast with you, Shaq, is that it's not just talking to a former basketball player. I'm talking to one of the greatest businessmen that's ever lived. And one of the sponsors of our show, ZipRecruiter, uh, wants to kind of take what you've learned in life and teach people. And they want to do a, a segment called The Big Assistant. So I, I have some questions for you that maybe it can help people. Again, shout out ZipRecruiter. How many assistants do you currently have? Over 20. Holy moly. And that's because my favorite word in life is delegation. I want to do a podcast. Damn, damn. Call my boy Shane. I want to do a podcast. Damn, damn. Call my boy Adam. You always have to delegate. And I learned delegation by winning championships. No individual can win a championship by themselves unless you're playing an individual sport. But the things I do are not individual sports. Running a J.C. Penny is not an individual sports. Having ownership in Forever 21 is not an individual sport. Like, I'm here. I have to assign somebody to, to do that. So delegation is my favorite word. Second favorite word is trust. Like, if I'm going to tell you that, Shane, you, you run the podcast, you set it up, you call the people, I have to trust you. And the last thing is do not micromanage. I don't micromanage nobody that works. And I don't like to use the term works for me. Nobody that works with me. I never micromanage. So they may call me and say, hey, 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 what do you think? I say, handle it. That's what I pay you to do, so you handle it. So, you know, I I love to delegate, and I love to have people uh, give them access to the right side of my brain so they could do things that I want to get accomplished. Shaq, how, how do you deal with business owners or people that think they can do everything? I know you just, you kind of broke it down to us why it's important, but how often do you have to deal with that? You know, a lot of people think and feel they could do everything. It's because, you know, based on experiences, like sometimes if you delegate to the wrong people and you, your outcome is not favorable, then sometimes you have to say, you know, I'm going to do it myself. But I trust everybody that I, I, I delegate to. So, you know, again, if I'm going to, you know, want to want to open up a gym, I'm going to call my boy Rock. If I want to open up a, a boxing gym, I'm going to call Alicia Bumgartner and, you know, delegate those those topics or those practices that I, I you know, want people to do. It. Listen, to each his own. I, uh, I rather focus on what I know. What I know is basketball. What I know is music. What I know is how to have fun. Am I a smart businessman? Yes, but I rather align myself with people that are smarter. All right, last one. Shout out again to ZipRecruiter. They're trying to help people hire so they can build their businesses. When you realize that you've delegated and the person can't do it, how quickly do you go, I need to find someone who can? When I delegate to somebody and I find out that they can't do it, I always give them three chances. Because guess what? I can't do it either. So you're on my team. We're going to figure out together. Like, you know, when I first came in, I can't beat Mike. Hey, man, we're going to draft Chris Webber. No, don't grab, don't draft Chris Webber. I need this Penny Hardaway cat. Damn, we still can't beat, beat Mike. Hey, Horace, Horace Grant, he don't like being over there at the Bulls. Bring him over. Now we beat Mike. So, you know, I trust you to delegate for you. You don't figure it out. That's okay. Maybe we can figure it out together. We're a team now, and we get it done. But I always give a person three chances. Like, like I told my boy yesterday, and I'm probably going to have to fire him after this. I said, hey, come get this old treadmill and get rid of it. He takes it around the corner from my house and dumps it in somebody else's yard. <laughs> That's what he does. He takes it around the corner and dumps it in somebody. Not the back of the yard, in the front of the yard on the main street. So when I drove by this morning, I was like, is that my fucking trade bill that I just told my boy to get rid of? <laughs> so Rock, your ass got to go. <laughs> <laughs> Third chance, sorry. You know what's crazy about the, the whole COVID situation? Like us, black people, we know how to we know how to bring it all the way up to the line. For example, we get to Orlando. So I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm not going to stay here. I'm going to go to Orlando. I got a big house in Orlando. They're saying, don't come on the streets. Don't do this. Don't go to the store. Don't go to the mall. But they didn't say shit about the lake. I'm looking at it. I'm, I'm, I'm looking at all the ordinance and all the laws. They don't say nothing about the lake. When I tell you the lake was motherfucking packed every day, I had to put, 
I had to buy two new boats. I'm gonna tell you why. Because I, I had because I had this bullshit pontoon boat. And there's this rich kid who lives around the corner. This motherfucker show up in a brand new boat every day. And he stopped by the house playing his music like a motherfucker was flexing on me. I'm like, all right, Kenny, give me another boat. We can't. Give me another boat. So I got a boat. So this motherfucker went and got a bigger boat. So now I'm like, you know what? Kenny, get it up. So I bought two different boats just to fucking competing with this little kid. We was on the lake every day. Because again, no problems. No cops, yeah, no, yeah, hundreds of people, no cops. And when I tell you they was partying, uh, they would come behind my house, put the boat to thing, we put the DJ, shit. it was like a party the whole time. And, I, and you know what was crazy? And we in the bubble, so by the time we, we're in the bubble, outside opens back up, by the way. Y'all still in the bubble? So we're in the bubble, but everybody else is back to living life. Lord have mercy. So, but we're at Disney, so we can literally hear the roller coasters and shit, like, <laughs> <laughs> we could literally hear that shit. So it, it felt like it felt like aspects of jail. Like bro. they having a ball, and we still stuck in this goddamn they bubble. Bro, even clean my room. I'll never forget that. Like, so I was at I was uh, doing a show, and I said, "Can we do housekeeping? We don't do housekeeping. We don't do food. We don't do nothing." I said, "Can I get some towels?" They threw the towels in a bag. Yeah, they, they just threw them in the room, poof, on the ground. <laughs> like I swear to God, like they didn't clean no rooms. There was no, there was no uh, 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 food. To, y'all lucky y'all had food. Y'all had to feed. It was a, it was a video game. Just imagine you in the hotel, in second floor, the elevator open up. You just see a big L.A. Lakers banner. Third floor, Miami Heat banner. Fourth floor, Boston Celtics banner. Like every floor it was a team. Was a team, and that was them was your roommates. Like you, LeBron riding around on a bike. You got dudes over here playing ping pong. Donovan Mitchell and whoever else, they playing ping pong. Other guys, they over here at the pool. And <laughs> yes, like, it's, like NBA, it's like NBA University with no women. When, oh, yeah, if they would have brought Magic City to y'all, y'all would have been happy. We'd have been real happy. Y'all would have been good. That's all we was missing. It would have <laughs> been a lot more desirable well, if, if they did some, that. I heard so many funny stories about how they was trying to get women in the bubble. They, they was bringing girls. They was trying to sneak uh, girls over the wasn't game. wasn't happening. They wasn't was cut, happening. They wasn't trying to get him in there. It wasn't. It wasn't happening. It, it just wasn't a realistic thing. They had that shit. I'd have got somebody in. Shaq, it wasn't no. happening. Bro, I'm from Orlando. I, I have Disney contacts. I would have got somebody in. I'm, I'm yeah, telling you right now. Found, we had found one little. We found one little thing. One day, me and Pat Bear, we riding bikes, and we just decided we just go ride all around this bitch, just see what's going on. Right. And we found we the employee entrance, and we was like. Nah, I done got it. I got one strike already. Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> I was, I was already be out the league if I can't. Yeah, I was already on strike one. I said, man, we ain't for the play with these people. But it was, it was a couple of little cracks in their system, though. It could have <laughs> happened. happened. So, Bill, you've been doing stand up how long? Uh, 28. 28. 30. Basically. Yeah. yeah. So, if I'm not, you started out at a beauty pageant? So, I was at Rutgers. It, it sounds weird, but I was. Uh, I was at Rutgers and Delta Sigma Theta had this like uh, male beauty pageant. I think I'm a sophomore at the time. So you were in a male beauty pageant? Yeah. And I did stand up. Hold on. You, were you in what the. What you mean? Yeah, I had yeah, No, hold on, hold on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was all females too. No, no, hold on. No, 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 no. No, no, hold on. I know where you going. Okay, yeah, man, he's past that. Yeah, hold on, hold on. Look, man. You was in the male beauty pageant yeah. doing what? You had your shirt off? I had to take my shirt off, man. I was in. I was, I hey, was man, where your book, shirt at? 42. <laughs> and I had like one, I had one mother. Can I curse on you? Yeah, of course. One motherfucking pick. And uh, <laughs> I was skinny as hell. And uh, Hold on. Were you competing in the beauty pageant or were you just so, doing yeah, comedy? Yeah, so basically what they did was they had. You know, we we had the like black tie event. All the dudes came out fly, walked out for the ladies screaming. Then they had the they had the, the bikini, Don't try to like twist the, uh, uh, the brief joint. So you know, you put a little extra sock in your joint when you coming down there, and make sure you you looking, you know, you looking kind of swole. Yeah. <laughs> Make sure it wasn't cold yeah, in the building. Yeah, yeah, you gotta make sure it ain't cold. You looking weird. They be like, mm -mm, he don't look right. So, yo, dudes was really putting socks in their joint. They was putting like tissue. They was making sure they had a nice impression. And then, uh, then, then they had a talent part. And then uh, I did stand up. And then after that, everybody was like, yo, Bill, funny as hell. And then 
I just kept doing coffee houses and step shows, and that's how I started. Did you do a, Did you do another beauty pageant after that? No, that never was the again. Last one? It was too much. One and done. I got uh, I'll tell you what. Just let me see the footage. I'm, I'm gonna pay for the footage, and I will. I, I won't put it out. Yeah, you is. I, I promise. I, I already won't put know it you. Out. You will have my ass looking crazy. I was crackhead, skinny too. I got a picture. You should see how skinny I was. I look crazy. You can see my heart beating. <laughs> <laughs> so how'd you get into Terminal D? Terminal D is like this famous place like so where, in we're Newark, where we're from. Where we're from. Um it you was would always be smooth too. The Versace it was, it shirts, was, the S curl. Yeah, you know, back well, I forgot about that S curl, didn't R&B. you? Uh, so <laughs> in the hood though, right by the projects was this little restaurant. And um and they had they wasn't doing comedy. So me and my boy Bob Sumner, who at the time he was like, Yo, B man, this will be a good spot for you to work out. I see you trying to come up. And um, the Felton family owned it. Right. You know, they owned all the cleaning services in Newark. And so they had this little fly restaurant with good wings and all that. And uh, Terry Hodges was the host at the time. You saw the shot? You feel the me? shot he just took at you with the wings? Go ahead. Yeah, yeah, the wings were good. So then uh, I was only there outside the bubble. So look, <laughs> so <laughs> I was only there for a day because I was visiting my people. So real quick, so all I did was do stand-up, do stand-up. I started getting a little bit of buzz in the city. And this is how I blew up in Newark. Terry Hodges was hosting um, Showtime at the Apollo that night, and he let me be the guest host. And he never got the job back. Because once I started hosting, it was over. Because I was I knew everybody, all the state troopers. I was I, I knew everybody history, so I could be in there killing you, killing him, kill this one. Everybody's like, yo, Bill, you got to be the host. And that's how I took off the buzz, started happening. Then we went to Club 88. Remember Club 88? And then we end up being at Terminal, uh, at uh, at uh, the Peppermint Lounge, which you used to oh, go yeah, to. Oh, yeah. Bill is the only cousin that, out, that outdoes me at the family reunion. <laughs> no, you know, like when I get that chat, 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 as soon as he walk in, all, all, all the good looking arms, Bill, oh my God. Nah, Bill. Bill don't know how to work right. the room, right. man. Well, let me tell you, can I tell you a funny story? No, go ahead, go ahead. First time, this is like when we both get on Shaq is in Orlando and I'm on MTV, right? So I go down to Orlando, I'm hanging with him. And I'm thinking, I'm like lightweight famous now. I'm like, yo, I know you in the league, my dude, but I'm, I'm on one right now. I'm on TV 14 times a day, whatever. I'm thinking I'm big time. We go to uh, Disney World. I said, God damn, this man famous. Right, so do you remember Mariah Carey was there? Yes, I do. So wherever we go in Disney World, Shaq is getting swarmed by 50, 60, 80, 100 people. It's me, Kenny, Dirt. Um, it's about eight of us. And we're surrounding him because the kids, like, they're running. We can't move. We can't, like, get on rides and all this. Then I, they wouldn't even, they run right past me. I'm like, dog, they, I'm like, damn, this dude is on another level. I would never forget that. I was like, yo, he famous, famous. Damn. So, Mariah Carey running over there. She jumped off the roller coaster to take a picture with this motherfucker. I was like, hi, Mariah. She ain't even see me. I also used to stick up for Bill, too. So it was this guy that used to come to my house. Statue of limitations up. We're going to tell the story. Tell story. Yeah, so <laughs> this guy always used to come to my house. So he didn't know who Bill was. So he disrespect Bill one day. So I said, so Bill, Bill want to touch him up. I said, Bill, don't worry about it. Tell him what my cousin Kenny did. Okay. <laughs> Shaq said, yo, he had these two big uh, Rottweilers, uh, Thor and Shazam, big ass 200 pound Rottweilers. He said, yo, go take some doo doo and put in this Ferrari. <laughs> so, so we all in the kitchen and whatever. Cause the dude was talking greasy to Bill. He was talking bill. greasy the whole day. He was an asshole. He was being real, real cocky. You know, he, I guess he had a little bit of paper. Shaq said, shh, shh, shh. go right back. Drop that dude on that Ferrari. Cause he had a roof, he had no roof on the joint. So he goes, dude, the fuck's going on, man? <laughs> Some fucking dog took shit my fucking Rory, man. <laughs> Shaq was like, no way. Ain't no way. Thor, <laughs> Shazam, did y'all shit in this car? <laughs> man, so no, no way, man. Somebody put a fucking doo-doo in my car, man. <laughs> we got rid of him. <laughs> yeah, we got rid of him. Yeah, he, yeah, he just got talk great. Right, Go speaking, ahead, Adam. Speaking of, speaking of shit going down in cars, <laughs> I have a... a I have to pick up something with Lou here because he says he's only known for Magic City. Lou has one of the greatest fan stories of all time. He's in his car, 
Gunman pulls up, tries to rob him, realizes oh, yeah. it's Lou Will, and says, my bad, I'm a fan. Yeah, he gave me I wanted to know, Shaq, if something like that has ever happened to you. But Lou has to tell that story, too. Yeah, yeah. I'm that's sure true. That's, I'm sure you get a lot of passes. Shaq, ain't nobody fucking with you. That happened to you for real? Yeah, yeah. Why you didn't call me, dog? I, shit, I wish I should have. I that, got that, that happened here? No, nah, I was in Philly. I was, I was in Philly. The crazy thing about the story is my security was actually with me. He was in the car behind me. And I was leaving the, I was leaving the barbershop. And he called me. He said, you good? And I said, yeah, I'm finna go to the house. He said, cool. I watched him in my rearview mirror U-turn and go the other way. So when he goes the other way, I look down at my phone and I just heard tick, 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 like somebody tap on my window. But I'm at a light and I just look up and he like, get out the car. Oh, shit. My stupid ass rolled the window down. <laughs> Excuse me? That oh, was, come on, dog. <laughs> that was my, my first How can stop. I help you? Yeah, I gave him a Where better shot. <laughs> Where the hell are you from, Atlanta? Alpharetta? Light ass. <laughs> oh, damn, man. You from the him, suburbs? I gave him a better shot. Are you shot. in need of assistance? Yeah. But that's, but that's actually the best thing I could have did because right. when I rolled the window down, we looked at each other. And he said, Lou Will? Can't even do it to you, bro. <laughs> yeah. True story. True story. That's dope. And he I've was just like, he said, before. man, I just got out of jail. Only thing I got is a bus ticket, bro. I'm out here starving. And I was just thinking on my feet. I said, look, bro, it's a McDonald's right there. You meet me at the McDonald's, I'll buy you whatever you want to eat. He ran to the McDonald's. I thought, fuck that. I'm about to, I'm about to dip on him. But I'm like, nah, I gave him my word. So I called my security. I'm like, yo, come to the McDonald's right, right there. now. So, but the story, that's another story that's taken a life of its own. It's like I sat down and ate with him and I let him in my car and none of that shit happened. Right. I meet him at the McDonald's. So when I get to the counter, he ordering the gang of shit, by the way, like three double cheeseburgers. He, he racking up for the week. My man, by this time, my man, he don't, he the door fly open to McDonald's. He ready to go. So I'm telling him, hold up. So the dude order a bunch of food. I'm like, man, good luck to you, dog. I paid for the shit and I got up out of there. I never had nothing like that happen in the streets, but police-wise, that, that's a true story. So I'm, I'm, we're doing a warrant and we stop this guy in LA and we get behind him and he's looking and it's taking a while. So we go get him and we we we, we put hands on him, right? right? And then we open his trunk and his back seat, motherfucker got everything. <laughs> no. Motherfucker got everything. Grenades, launchers, Uzis. What? Yeah, but he said, I'm a Laker fan, and when I saw Shaq get out of the car, I, I just I just chilled out. But if I wasn't there, it probably would've been a long night. Wow. Because yeah, like he was looking, like we was all looking, so we got him out the car, he resisted, and he saw me, he kind of calmed down. But when we opened up his shit, whew, <laughs> I was I was always curious about that, though, because you like one of the most recognizable people in the world. And you police, how does that how does that work? Actually, real police. Yeah, you like a real. So when I first started doing patrol, it didn't work out too well. Cause like people thought it was like a, a TV show. He was joking. Like, like yeah, like I would come up and so then I moved to uh, uh, Grand Theft Auto. We do stolen cars. So at that point, if we catch you, it's nothing to really talk about because we already caught you in the stolen car, checked the VIN numbers and all that. We lock you up. Then I went to uh, Internet Crimes Against Children. Which is terrible, by the way. So, like, if we do a warrant and knock on your door, we have to get you. Only got caught one time, and the one time we got caught was because we hit the wrong house. We was in Virginia, and you know how, like, in the country, we're, we're like the the nine. You do it with the nail, but if one nail comes out, it comes down to look, make it look like a six. So we hit the wrong house one day, and I got on a mask. I got on a mask, but I forget my boots, and I got on my shack shoes. So we. <laughs> Wrestling with this dude, the motherfucker said, "You ain't no cop, you motherfucking Shaq. I ain't Shaq. I ain't Shaq. Put your hand behind me." <laughs> so, then, so then, so then, he called the cops on us. You motherfuckers came in my house. I think one of them was Shaq. They beat me up. <laughs> oh my God. I thought he was playing right when he first told me he was gonna be a cop. I'm like, dog, you can't do everything. He's like, no, man, I'm in the academy right now, right? So he playing for the Lakers. I'll never forget this. 
I said, who the fuck? I was like, oh shit, the police here? This motherfucker take 14 hours to get out of the car. <laughs> <laughs> I told you, motherfucker. I told you I'm the popo. I look in the police car. He's sitting all the way in the back. Like he got this chair is all the way in the back. Like he got it customized for him. Yeah. But he got to do this. <laughs> I mean, I mean, you might just shoot somebody. I ran into Shaq one time in Orlando at the mall. He was at a, it was a regular charger, yeah. but when he got out, he got out like the back seat. I was like, <laughs> every time he get a car, it's a, he in the back seat, bro. I never forget this when you was in Miami. He was like, yo, cuz, you gotta check out my new Lambo, right? I'm like, man, you can't fit in no motherfucking Lambo. Was it? It was like I think it was purple or some shit. I get in the car, bro. My feet is dangling. Like, like my feet is like this, right? I can't even touch the pedal because his shit is custom back here. And I'm, I can't put my hand on the steering wheel. I was like, yo, that's crazy. But you fit in it. You, you remember that car? two cars? Yeah, yeah. I had to buy, I had to buy one uh, real Lambo and one salvage and cut it in half and super glue them together. <laughs> yeah. That's when you know you got money. You got to make a, a bunch car. of it. Yeah. yeah. So I got a question. I, I asked you this upstairs. Because because in, in basketball, probably this summer, if he does a crossover, and I do the same crossover, but add a little something to it, am I stealing? So, like, if you do a joke, okay, and I remix it, your premise, but I don't say it like you, but it's your premise, and I remix it. Is that stealing jokes? Yeah. yeah. In comedy, I, it is. I never knew that. No, but it's true. Like, like, the thing about comedy is it's an unsaid rule, but it's kind of like an honor code. If I do a joke and you, you know, you see me do it, like that's off limits. Now, the topic, anybody can do a, a, a let's say Obama joke. Like you you don't own the, the area, but the presentation, how you set it up, what you say, that's yours. Like that's your take. Now I could still do an Obama joke and somebody might say, oh man, that's close. Cause sometimes comedians think alike. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So that, you gotta kind of, but if it's verbatim, bing, 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 that's when cats be in their feelings because reality with comedy is the first one that do it on a special or get it on TV, you own it. It's yours. Yeah, yeah. that's how it goes. So you've been in the game 30 years. Mm -hmm. How? Like you've been famous. Longevity, man, like I, I, because I think my secret sauce is like I'm always doing different things. Like whether I'm on a TV show, or I'm, you know, making a movie, uh, you know, uh, doing stand up, I always keep myself moving and you always got to stay relevant. Like, you know, it, it would be like, no disrespect to Hammer, like wearing the Hammer pants right now. The cats ain't wearing it right now. You know what I'm saying? So I never got stuck in one decade. You know, each decade I just evolved to what's going on, evolve. So now you got 30 years in the game, there's cats like Lil Williams who know who I am, Shaq obviously, but then there's different generations through the internet now. That's a whole nother game. Think when you came into the league, the, the social media aspect wasn't a part of it. Right, I always tell people that. I'm like, I lived a pre-social media life. Like I'm old enough where it wasn't relevant and also young enough where I've seen it in-, in I'm glad social media wasn't around when I was What? Uh, I'm, Thank you, brother. I'm glad. We appreciate that. Me and him had beef one time. You remember what? Why? What? You remember what? This motherfucker gave up all the secrets on how to be a player. All oh. that shit, he gave up. <laughs> I'm like, Bill, what the fuck? But you know what's crazy? He gave me the courtesy. He said, yo, I'm doing this movie, How to Be the Player. It's going to be some shit that you do. He, he didn't say we do. <laughs> it's going to be some shit that you do that you're going to see. I'm watching the movie. I'm like, this motherfucker gave up all my secrets. He gave up all. Boy, I was so bad. It was the uh, movie for guys. Like, to me. Bro, you gave up all my I shit. Know, man. And this is the thing, though, Shaq. You I had to change my you shit. the best life. <laughs> I, I had, had to change all my shit. At that time, because we didn't have social media, right? So you could make a mistake. You could live your life. And it Bill, was, Bill, don't don't say nothing. Don't say nothing. That's gonna get your wife mad at me. Yeah, I, I just. Thank well, you. I'm saying he lived a great. Life. <laughs> <laughs> I'm already divorced. Yeah. <laughs> just think about this. Shaq comes into the league. This is when the, you guys are really getting paid. So now it's like, it, it was a huge jump in salaries, right? So now cats is getting bread, they young, there's no social media. Y'all had the best window ever. Your era was the best window. Cause right you. after that, you, you, a doubt. Oh, you can't even get a chicken wing. Without a doubt. For so Lou, you always hear the next Kobe, next Shaq. Who's the next Lou Will? Like who do you watch in the league today that say, he reminds me of myself? Shit, I don't, I don't really want nobody to be me. Cause that was, that, that was something that was handed 
to me. You know what I'm saying? Like, no, I you earned to be that. a star. I wanted to be a starter. No, you earned, that, that, that's why I put you on the list. You know what I'm like, saying? Like, that wasn't something that I, I thrive to be. It just, that's just the way that my career went. And I, I embraced it. I decided either I'm just going to be miserable every day or I'm going to embrace it and I'm just going to be, I'm just going to make it embarrassing to the point where it's like, why, why is he coming off the bench? Ain't no way you You know what I'm saying? And so that's, that's kind of how I approached it. But because it, it was an adjustment period for me for a minute because, you know, you start looking at your peers, getting different opportunities and you're like, damn. I want my I want my shot at it. I want to have an opportunity to see if I can run a team, if I can be a star player on a team. Never got that opportunity. You know what I'm saying? And so going through that, I just had to make a decision whether I'm gonna worry about what everybody else got going on or I'm just gonna make the best of what I got going. So if I if if I was looking at young guys and say who's the next Lou Williams, like I really like Malik Monk look a lot like me. Like watching him in watching him in Sacramento and how he's playing, like that looked like that's that looked like my style right there. You know, I'm not saying that he's he's trying to be me, but I'm just saying like how he's impacting the game. That look that look a lot like me. My question for Lou, because I'm a I'm a gambler, and Shaq knows this. I white people gamble. It's a little <laughs> bit different, but Lou works. I white people gamble. Lou works with FanDuel, and I was curious. Lou, do you think players today know what their player prop is? Like, do you think nah. they know that that their line is 18 and a half points? Or do you nah. think when they walk in and some fan yells, hey, Lou, I need 20 points from you, do they process that at all? No. Nah, we actually think it's disrespectful. Because you got to think, we make a ton of money. We don't give a fuck about your prop bet, man. Right. We don't care about your $100 bet. Right. Like, Right. This is my livelihood. Right. So we ain't, we not going out there thinking, oh, I'm 18 and a half tonight. <laughs> I got to I got to go make sure this guy makes $1500 right. off of like that's that's like the first and you, and the other aspect of it that people don't realize. You know how many people DM you and send you hate and tell you, "Oh, fuck you. You ain't shit. You 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 missed my parlay and like so that aspect of it like, man, we don't give a fuck about your bet. So no, I don't I don't think that's I don't think that's a thing for for players. We actually hate it without hurting people's feelings. You know, people get sensitive. KD says the other day, his name should be discussed in the greatest of all time conversation. What has he not done? Agree or disagree? He see you got to be specific. You can't just say greatest of all. Time. No, the goat. Like they always talk about LeBron. I think Michael Jordan. I throw on Kobe. Some people don't. I threw in Steph Curry the other day. No, he's saying his name should be in that conversation. Kareem. Kareem. I think KD is the GOAT on this for seven-foot, two-guard. No, no, no. Is he, is he one of the greatest of all time? He's yes, one no. of the greatest seven. You know, no, we've no. never should, seen another KD should, should he be in that conversation? No, no. What do you think? I think so. And I, I think so. Kevin Kevin Durant is a transcendent talent, bro. Like we've never we've never, we've never seen, seen it before. We've never seen any anybody like KD. And I, I said this the other day on on, uh, on on something else I was doing. The timing was bad when he went to Golden State. Right after that, right after losing to them, mm. then going to them. I think any other year in his career, he go there. It's not looked at as that particular thing right. you know what I'm saying and it's it's such a sensitive subject with people in in basketball and basketball de debates but Kevin Durant is absolutely one of the best players that we've seen of all time I, but, but I want to get him I want to give him a goat kind of status because in in it I don't want to disrespect his talent because KD is we've never seen that before right what, from as a fan of basketball to me I've never seen a more skilled guy at that height. He could do everything that a guard can do. He shot, he shoots better than anybody ever, damn near except for Steph. And that part I think is GOAT, goat status. But I'm saying like, when y'all start doing championships and this, it gets weird. I think he has his own special category yeah. like, like me. Yeah, I, like, I'm, not, a, I'm, I'm not in the GOAT kind of asset, but I am one of two of the most dominant players ever. ever. So he's one of two of the most most prolific dominant scorers ever. Yes. And, and I think and I think like you said to piggyback on what you said because 
you lose to Golden State and then you go join them and win championship, I think that tarnishes it. Now, if he can win one where he's the bus driver like Charles would say, I think we would definitely have to put him in that conversation. But right now, I don't really have him that. But he does have his own He get category. one next year, that whole yeah. narrative gets wiped away. Yes, it because does. that's one that he can that he can call his own, his own and not have any cut on it. Like this is this was me. Like y'all can kiss my ass. This yeah. <laughs> And I, I want to. I want guardable, bro. Yeah, I want to see it happen for him because the narrative is just so crazy with him. It's like people love to hate Kevin Durant. People love to hate Kevin Durant. He's so. And, the, and all he did was win. Yeah, but I think I think what it is with with KD though, man, because KD doesn't actually let us in. Is very similar to like when Kobe early years of Kobe, we didn't get to know Kobe really well till the end. Right. Like like where he retired, we knew Kobe more. And um, KD, um, he's starting to kind of come out of his shell a little bit. He's doing his interviews more. But think about K- KD is kind of quiet, bro. Mm-hmm. Except on Twitter, he going at you. But, you know. Yeah, but I think I think people were upset because, especially guys that, that you know, we play this game. If we knew that was acceptable, probably a lot of us would have switched up. A lot of people would have done it. If I, if I knew that was acceptable, I would have just went to Chicago. If I knew that I, that was acceptable, I would have went and played with the Spurs. If I knew that was okay, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? I would have went and played with a team that was almost there, like Utah. I would have went and played in Utah. Like if I knew that, that was acceptable. We always thought like, nope, you, gotta stay. you the man, you the guy, you got to get it done. You got to stay, you got to make trades, you got to do this, you can't. And it, I, I think he did it before. It was acceptable. It's acceptable now. People just, I want to go here. I want to do this. I want to, oh, hey, you, you play on the team, play on the team. Let's get on this team and create a big three. But, again, if I knew that was acceptable, I just would have went and played with Mike. I would have played oh with Mike. Oh, my God. But, I, Shaq, I think that. No, no. No, no. Yeah, but that was but that was by. No, no, but that was from, from, from working and thinking. Like, I didn't know them. I saw him and I went upstairs and be like, hey, bring me Penny and bring me Hart. It ain't like I knew him and be like, hey, man, I, I know you play is, with Bill. The game is the one superstar is done. Yeah. Everybody too good now. Everybody too good. Everybody too good. You got to have somebody with you. <laughs> you can't do it by yourself. You no can't more. do it. It's, everybody's too good now. Honestly, the game has evolved so much. You got guys like. Wimbiana, he's seven four, doing things you've never never imagined. Kevin Durant, things that you've never imagined. These the things that Luca does. Jokic, how much the game has evolved from position to position. Ain't no ain't no one superstar winners no more. That's Go ahead, Adam. A lot of you guys have been mentioning Kobe. Uh, we a big thing is happening in a few weeks. February eighth, twenty twenty four. So eight twenty four, his statue is being unveiled out oh, there in L A. And I'm curious, Shaq, you're feeling about that, and then Lou and Bill, any moments that you have with Kobe you want to share, but Shaq, you first. Yeah. I definitely, it's definitely deserved. I, I'm, I always talk about my four. Don't get three without him, right? Absolutely. Don't get three without Big Shot Bob. Without a, and, you know, we went through a lot of trials and tribulations that built us into the powerhouse that we became. I revealed something on uh, Trey's podcast, Young Trey, and how I used to handle Kobe. See, when I was there, I was, I was, it was mine. Everything was mine. And I see that he wanted that. Now, a lot of times when you get in a position like that, you, uh, you're you not going to get it. But I knew that I needed him. So I would egg him on. Well, fuck it, it's my team. And they were just driving crazy. <laughs> no, what? Well, fuck you. Man, fuck all that. Just throw, throw that motherfucker to me. You ain't, you, you ain't good at like, because remember his first two years, I won't say he was good, but he was young. And he would try to do something and be like, no, nah, no, nah, that ain't how the shit work, my boy. Throw that motherfucker to me, cut, then we give it, and it would drive him crazy. So he'd be like, you know, when he say he was in the gym seven, ten hours a day, he was. I leave, because listen, I'm, you know, people always talk about, oh, you, you never came down in shape. Who the fuck I'm getting in shape for? Who I'm training for? I don't have to. I'm I'm already that guy. And, and when I want to get ready, when I turn it on, that's when that's when it's gonna be a problem. So he was, he had to do that. So he pew 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 pew, and I see that it's like having a little puppy. Right. You see the puppy bites. Now we gotta train him. You smack him on the head, see what he gonna do. You smack him on the head, and he go away. You know you got a soft puppy, but you smack him, he come out. So I would just drive him crazy because I knew I was gonna need him. 
I'm fucking, I'm getting 30. What you, you getting always, tonight? You, you know what's so dope? I just had a flashback when you called me. You were in, you had just came out of practice and you said, yo, B, you said this dude gonna be the next Michael Jordan. I'll never forget that conversation. You said he young, but I could see he gonna be the next Michael Jordan. I remember, I said, cause I called all the Jersey cats after that. I was like, yo man, Shaq said this dude is gonna be the next Kobe. Nobody believed it, but eventually uh, Kobe was gonna be the next Michael Jordan. After that, he just started gradually getting better gradually to becoming who he who he but i would piss him off and you know the media people don't understand marketing i want everybody to talk about us you know what happened to that motherfucking lou williams ain't passing the motherfucking ball he want to shoot because i know lou williams ain't no punk he gonna say something back but on the court it was all like he knows this off the court everybody gonna do what they do when you get inside that that rectangle that square or whatever it's all respect so you know what I mean? But I used to just drive them crazy on purpose, and it worked. Like, people say, what would you do different? I wouldn't do nothing different. Wow. I wouldn't do Because we won three out of four. It would be a better narrative if we won one out of four or didn't win any. We won three out of four. I ain't the smartest cat. That's 75 motherfucking percent. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, By the time I'm good. I played with Cole, mm-hmm. I got the product of that. Yes, sir. He was cooking, cooking. Because when I played with him, he got upset, and he said, from now on out, I touch the ball every time down the court. Y'all going to learn what it's like to play with Kobe Bean fucking Bryant. So I got the product of him constantly smacking him on this. <laughs> That's great. Is it, true? Is it true he came in the locker room and everybody that was wearing his shoes, like he, he took them back? Clean that shit out. <laughs> clean that shit out. Are you serious? Yeah, this was, this was the same rant. This was the same rant. We got blew out in Portland. And he he just he went down the line one at a time and told everybody what the fuck was wrong with him. You know who he got that from, right? Exactly. He went down the line. He skipped he skipped me, Metal World Peace, and Brandon Bass. Everybody else got it. <laughs> everybody else got smoke. Everybody else got it. And we came in the next day for practice. And, uh, I don't know if Carlos was the equipment manager uh, for y'all. I don't know how long he was there. Carlos come in, cool as ever. And he just started racking Kobe's out of motherfuckers' locker. So me and Nick Young sitting there like, what you doing? Kobe said, he don't want y'all wearing his shoes. Y'all motherfuckers soft. <laughs> oh, no. <snap. laughs> but I'm signed to Peak Chinese Company. Nick signed to Adidas. Mm. So we in there crying, laughing, because we ain't got Kobe. Right, so anyway. we like, ah, look at y'all. <laughs> <laughs> we in there crying, laughing, but I, we was a product of, of Big Brother, yeah. making sure, because by the time I was with him, he was the boss. You know what I'm saying? When, when he walked in the room, everything changed. You know, even when he was at the end of his career, he, he wouldn't come to practice sometimes, and we started doing the, uh, the farewell. You have to tour. practice? Not because he was so banged up at that time. He was banged up, so he wasn't really practicing. But he would come into the meetings and just change everything. We we might be working on a scheme for three, four days, and Cole walk in and say, no, we ain't doing that. Because that's how I was. And that was the law. We wasn't doing it. Yeah, I learned that from, from you know, D. Scott. Yeah. So when I first got to Atlanta, like, I'm I'm a a corporate kid. I'm professional. I don't, that's my first time in. D. Scott, man, he said, you got to take over. You can't, you can't come here and be silent. Like, they, they, this ain't going to work. We, you got to take over. So I go to L.A. And, again, I don't pay attention to players. So, you know, it's like, hey, we, we, we allow you to do movies. You got to work out. So I'm shooting blue chips. From 12 to 3, I'm working out. So I see this skinny kid, and this motherfucker diming me up every time. I'm, I'm fucking thinking he's an actor. Like, yo, man, what's your name? He's like, hey, man, I'm Penny Hardaway. I'm like, you play? He's like, yeah, I'll put my name in the draft. You did? I get on the phone. I say, yo, man, y'all heard of Penny Hardaway? I say, yeah, so I want this motherfucker with me. Bro, when I tell you, me and this motherfucker was magic and Korean, he was. It was bananas. To no, me. but hold on. I'm like, no, I'm talking summertime when ain't no rules or everybody doing their shit. He, I'm touching this motherfucker every time. I'm like, a dream come true. Because, like, you know, I played with cats like Lou Will that were really good enough, and they didn't have to pass it. Like, I played with uh, uh, Mahmoud Abdul Rauf. Yeah. Every time he should, like I'd be in the post and put my hands up and he would miss me, but it wouldn't matter because the shit would go in. So I ain't really touch it a lot. So, but with this penny can, I'm touching it. So I call him. I said, hey, man, I want this penny Hardaway kid. Man, we we, uh, we we got the number one pick. We're going to go with C-Web. 
So now I'm thinking about what D-Way said. I said, I tell you what, if you don't get this Penny Hardaway kid up, my deal is up in two years, I'm going to be looking to do other shit. So now me and my cousin Kenny, we at the house, we, we, we watching the draft. So I'm saying to myself, now nah, I'm going to see if this shit going to work. So they draft c Web. I got ornaments and shit in my house. I break everything in my house. These motherfuckers disrespect me. They think I'm playing good because now these guys tell me you got to be the man. I'm starting to feel myself now. I'm like, okay, I'm telling y'all I'm the man. Y'all not respect me. Now I got to show you this Jersey shit. Now, now I got to go straight brick city. So I'm breaking the house. And then I get a phone call. John Gary, he said, he said, we're about to make a move. I said, what? He said, just watch. Then they brought in Penny. I was like, oh, shit. I was like, oh, shit, this shit works. So <laughs> by the time I got to L.A., I'm on one. My shit, this is how we doing it. Suicide, no, I don't think so. Practice at eight, nah, I practice. Like, so it's, it's, but like we're winning a little bit, so it's working. So that's how I was with everybody. So that's where he got that from. Because I was like, I'm not I had like I'm not a 15-year beef with Penny. You did? Yeah. 15 years? I'm from. I'm originally from Memphis. Oh, I didn't so know I, that. I moved to Atlanta when I was nine. I was telling Bill this off camera. Yeah. So Penny was a god to me. You know what I'm saying? He was at Memphis State. I didn't watch pro basketball at that time. I watched college basketball because Penny Hardaway was the biggest thing that we've ever seen in, in my neighborhood. Right. And I never met him, never had been around him or anything. And I finally got an opportunity to meet him. And he played the shit out of me, man. He did the same shit to Kobe. <laughs> he played the shit out of me. And I and I, I carried that with me for a long time. <laughs> it was spit. It was funny. It was, it was, we, we, How did it happen? What happened? My, se- my senior year in high school, he's at the end of his career. He, he's with the Knicks now. Mm. So, uh, so now at this time, agents are starting to come in, uh, different shoe reps or whatever. So my, uh, my Nike rep at the time, he had Penny too. So he know how I felt about Penny. So he like, yo, Nick's about to play the Hawks. I'll bring you to the game, introduce you to Penny. I'm like a kid in the candy store. Like I never met him. So game played after the game. Walk over to him, he come out of the back. And now, now that I'm 17 years pro, I understand now. Because after them games, you really just want to see your family and get up out of there. You know what I'm saying? And so I, I understood what he was going through, but at that moment I did I I couldn't I didn't appreciate it. So he uh they walked me over to him and my man say, Yo, this is Lou Williams kid thinking about going to the league out of high school. And they, he give get Penny my whole rundown. Shook my hand, didn't even look at me. It's just kept having this conversation. Wow. And from that moment on, I tried to shit on Penny every opportunity I got. <laughs> Anytime I was in front of a microphone, <laughs> I had some negative to say about Penny. And um, so some, some uh, like. You was on your Cat Williams. Yeah. Yeah, like for, for a while. Oh, Cat Anytime, Williams, so, Lou Williams. <laughs> Cat Williams, Lou Williams. So fi- like about 15 years of my career go by, uh, Thad Young invites me to Memphis to play in the Bluff City Classic, okay. but Penny is the sponsor. So now by this time, everybody know is, is fuck Penny. You know what I'm saying? So they like, yo, because they got the one C on the jerseys and everything. So they like, man, we, you know, we, can, we can put a patch over the one C. They trying to accommodate. I said, no, nah, it ain't that deep. Like, I'm a grown man now. I don't rock with them, but we ain't got to. Right. Go through all of that. And so uh, <laughs> I get there, I, I walk in the locker room, and about five, ten minutes go by, Penny walks in. And he, he like, you could tell he's scanning the room looking for me. So he walk in, he's, let me holler at you for a second. He cleared the locker room, and he said, man, I just want to apologize to you. He was like, I ain't mean no harm by that. And he apologized. We shook hands, and... And I and I buried it, it up, and I and I let it go. But that that shit scarred me for a bro, long you time. Was hot he was as he was a god to me, bro. He was a he was a god to me. So for for, for that to be my 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 first yeah, I, interaction with him, yeah. that that burned me. Yeah. We know you got to go, brother. I want to say appreciate you coming. For sure, man. Thanks for having me. I gotta come. I gotta come back to uh, Shahuka, man. We gotta. Oh, man, why we gotta you do got something. a hookah podcast and no hookahs? I, that is kind I of have money. I was looking forward. Well, we to gotta it. talk to the boss. Oh, okay, oh, oh, okay. See, I want to start having hookahs. Yeah, so ideal. Got a cigarette. This is uh, ideal. I got you. <laughs> I got you. We ain't even got an air fresh. Like you ain't got. <laughs> man, you big diesel, man. Where the hookah lady at? With the, come, you got to give her twenty dollars. Uh, <laughs> I'll tell you what. Next time, you know what? That's a good idea. What you think, Adam?
Adam, how you gonna have a hookah podcast and no hookah? Listen, okay. we have uh, some blue blue ice will be coming for the next episode. <laughs> okay. I just want to say, Lou, we appreciate you, man. Thank you for telling your stories. Thank you for balling all these years, and welcome to the world of media, brother. You're killing appreciate it. Appreciate it. I'm learning. Now that Lou Will is gone, we have a special family edition of the Big Podcast. Joining the show is Big Cousin Kenny, one of the smoothest dudes you're ever going to meet. He handles all the business for Shaq, and frankly, I, I think he's uh, cooler than Shaq. Um, I don't know how you guys want to welcome Kenny to the show, but I do have one topic for after you welcome him. My question for Bill, because he did teach us all to be a player, if we had to do a Mount Rushmore of NBA players with Riz... Who would be on the smoothest cats to ever play in the NBA? The smoothest cats to play in the NBA, Diesel. Thank you. You boy, out. boy. Yeah, boy. Boy, boy. Boy, boy, I was about to get knocked up. <laughs> out. I'm gonna, if I'm going to go old school, I'm going to say Clyde the Glide Frazier, old school. Uh, somebody else that was smooth, uh, come in the league. Uh, the dress fly, oh, Dr. J. Dr. Oh, yeah, Dr. J. J. Yes. What about Mike? Yeah. Mike. Yeah, Mike. Mike. Was Mike was always smooth. Mike always had his suits on. Can't put a porterhouse on the same plate as a cinnamon roll. So, <laughs> right. <laughs> somebody said something. So, like, my crew, and you know this. Whenever somebody come at me, I want to go back. So I have to go through the group. So, so somebody said something. He said he want to be friends now. And he said, I'm always, you know, messing with him. And I was getting ready to say, you can't put a porterhouse on the same plate as a cinnamon roll. He's like, no, man, you can't, you can't tweet that. You can't tweet that. You can't tweet. But don't laugh because I'm, I'm about to get back to you. Don't, don't you ever say I did the same thing as KD did with my championships. I didn't say you did the same thing. I said you created super teams. Under the rules. Like they uh, no, 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 exist today. No, 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 no. The beef that people have with KD is that you were up 3-1 versus the team. You lose the series to the team, then you join the team. Yeah, you can't do that. I agree with that. Okay, so. I agree with that uh, statement. But you can't say that you didn't have super teams. You were surrounded by superstars okay, but everywhere I, you went. But I did it under the rules of the system. When I first got to Orlando, I didn't have much. I saw that we can get him. The next year, I saw that Horace Grant was saying he wasn't coming back to Chicago. Get I him. snatched him. Like, you know what I'm saying? So then when I leave, I, I, go to, I go to L.A. I see that, you know, Kobe, he's coming, but he's not quite there yet. So give me a B-show. Give me a Robin Orr. Give me a fight. Like this was all done like under the Fox. Yeah, like this was all done under the, the, the rule system. It ain't like we played against him and then he lost him and then I said, hey, you wanna play with me next year? Nope. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? These guys came and played with you. You yeah. didn't go play with them. Exactly. Uh Gary Payton, Carl Malone. Mm -hmm. You forget you played with these fellas? Yeah, I did. Nick Van Exel. You I remember y'all had four all stars. Hey man. How come you didn't tell me you had some death row stories? Give me a different death row story. Oh man, okay, I'll tell you a crazy one. So I'm at I'm I'm at um I'm at the Soul Train Awards, right? You know when you go to the Soul Train Awards, all the limos are back, and you got to stand there and wait for your limo and you leave. So Suge is standing out there. He got he got like a fly ass like drop top convertible, kind of like old school, probably Chevy joint Impala. So he out there like, hey, Bill, where the fuck you going tonight, Bill? I said, man, I don't know. I'm going to a couple little parties, man. He said, you better come fuck with the road. Right? So he doing this shit, right? Don't go to no puffy motherfucking party. Right? So, so this is a true story. So I'm like, no. He was like, hey, come through, bro. Fuck with the road. We got Tupac. We got uh, Jodeci. We got Daz. We got Corrupt. We doing, it's going to be good. I said, listen, Suge, I got three parties to go to. Your shit usually be crazy. Is it going to be good? He said, ain't, no, ain't shit going to happen to you, bro. Come on through and fuck with the road. I get there. Never forget this. I'm there all the three minutes. Sugar's on stage. All right, everybody, you here? We at the party. Tonight we off, off. Ain't nobody doing nothing. No gang signs, no nothing. We keeping it, we keeping it real easy. And um, we got Snoop, we got Drake. And somebody's man, pop, 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 pop. Somebody said something. Uh-oh. Riot. Right, bro. Dudes coming from our way. Everywhere, everywhere. Foo, foo, foo. They fighting. Boom, 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 boom. I went through the kitchen. 
<laughs> I had this little shorty with me too. I was like, look, baby, I'm gonna take you this little death row thing. Then we gonna dip to this match party. She's like, ah! Once she starts screaming, I start screaming. We left. <laughs> and I swear to God, I talked to Suge a couple weeks ago. And he was like, yeah, man, I remember you came through that, man. I ain't mean for that to jump off, but you know we gotta handle shit. True story. No more parties for me with Shug that. Suge stalking you for a little while? Nah, I don't get stalked, baby. That he was stalking you. You know better than that. <laughs> you done met everybody though. You don't have no Suge Knight story? No, I do not. I don't like that story. <laughs> hey, I got a, hey, Adam, I got a good story, right? This that ain't nothing happened. Kenny was there. This is this is I we hope everybody remembers. Can I tell a little Taser story? Yeah, go ahead. All right, so so we all in the Lando, right? And Shaq literally gets the first taser. Don't no, I don't even know if they out yet. So we all in the kitchen laughing, having a good time. And some guy comes in there, it's like, Shaq, I got you this thing. He's like, yo, what, whoa, whoa, whoa. We like, yo. He was like, yo, I gotta figure out if it works. So we all standing there like, yo, I don't know. So Shaq starts th throwing out money. How much money would it take for me to let me tase you, right? <laughs> so everybody's like, nah, Oops, man, I ain't gonna worry. let you tase me. This is the one that, they had the little, you know, the little thing here, and he'd go, right? Yeah, with right? the so, lightning so, going in between. Was it dirt that did it? Yeah, it was dirt. So, so Shaq said, 10,000, 10,000 right now. Let me hit you with it. Everybody's like, nah, nah, dirt said, yeah, man, hit me with that motherfucker. <laughs> we thought we killed him. He wouldn't start. <laughs> no, no. We thought you killed him. I don't thought we killed him. <laughs> Yeah, but yeah, it was me, right? Strike that from the tape. <laughs> Bill killed him. <laughs> I'll never forget that because I couldn't believe that, like, you actually, you know. Bill, wow. we still do that to this day. No one knows how much of a practical joker this cat is. On our first episode, Shaq was offering $5,000 to anyone to get tased, and the CEO of the company Playmaker was like, you can tase me. I'll I'm tase in. him right now. He's there right now. No, 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 no. Oh, you no, did it? You tased no, him? I will tase him right now for about the CEO of Playmaker. Hey, Miles, <laughs> go in my room and get my book back. I, I, I got one. Well, you know, white boys are always here to snuff me out. <laughs> I mean, wait, two seconds, bro? That's two blinks, bro. <laughs> Meanwhile, he got doodle so in his a, drawers. <laughs> <laughs> so See, you a, don't even know you got a doodle until he hits you with that taser. <laughs> so as a cop, you have to you have to let them tase you before you can carry a taser. So you got to get it. Yeah. So I'm sure first they time got I, first time I got it, mm -hmm. I didn't want them to shoot me because I had a game. I didn't want to play it. So they put four of us in an arm lock. You held one in, and Kenny held the end of it. Everybody went down. All, everybody. Everybody went down. It's like, and it's like uh, you, the uh, bigger you are. See, now you know I'm not making this up, bro. <laughs> I don't know, this dude, why he has such an affinity for tasers. Oh, yeah, but, go. oh God. No, 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 the one, the first one no, we no, had. No, no, this ain't, a, this, this my other joint. Okay, so how you work this thing, Kenny? Wait, well, let me get out the way. You got it upside down, first of all. Oh, damn. <laughs> oh, yeah, this. See, that's yeah, yeah, that's right here. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, that's one of my two. Oh, yeah, I've seen this before. Yeah, that's one of my two. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. We've got Bush. <laughs> but the cops. We, we got. <laughs> come on. Yeah, come on. Write you a paper with that. Yeah, you ready? <laughs> yeah. I know it's an old topic, but you're my first cousin and you're a comedian. Mm -hmm. Where'd you feel? And how'd you feel when Cat said all this about the comedians? And follow up question: What Dave said about Cat? How you feel about all that stuff? Um, I didn't hear what Dave said. Uh, I heard what Cat said. I I'll address the Cat. I think I think Cat is is just you know honest from his perspective. You know what I'm saying? And I I, I feel like there's you know obviously there's going to be some debatable issues, but I just think like you know he keep receipts about certain things, and I honestly feel like a lot of cats slept on Cat. Like, I don't think, you know, cats thought that he was gonna be big. You know, I think when he first came out, you know, he was in the dugout, coming up for bat, get a single here and there, maybe get on base, but then he kept he kept working. He's in the lap, kept working on his game, kept working on his game. He got better, he got big. And then he got as big as the guys that, you know, was at one point bigger than him. So I think that's the chip though. But we all need that chip, you know? 
everybody needs a chip. Everybody has something that they're fighting for to prove, you know. And I think that's where his angle is. I remember one time I was talking to him, and I was like, I was like, Cat, why you do what you do? He was like, um, first of all, <laughs> For every Batman, there needs to be a Joker. And I'm the Joker. I said, wow. He said, you know, let the other cats be Batman. I'm the Joker. I said, all right, I like it. Because it works. And when he do it, it works. Showed out shows. Everybody's talking about it. Internet on fire. So he, 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 de he definitely knows how to polarize people. I got a question for you. Is it possible to read 6,000 books in one year? Impossible. Impossible. That's like when Will Chamberlain said he, he had sex with 30,000 women. When? <laughs> when? Like, like in between, in between foul shots, like. No, <laughs> no I, hold on. 30,000 women. You, do, I question because they didn't have cell phones back in the day. So you mean to tell me every time? How you reach them? That, thank you. On a pay phone? <laughs> yeah, on a pay phone. <laughs> uh, that, that, it's, I think it's very difficult. I'm assuming that, you know, he embellished a little bit, but at the same time, what people don't give Cat credit for is really smart Cat, bro. Yeah, he's like, intelligent. Cat is very smart, dude. And uh, another thing that I know is he's really good with numbers. Like he's, it's, it's almost like he is a savant on some certain levels. I had a conversation with him for three hours and he talked about every topic in a very interesting way from religion to basketball, to rap music, to, uh, 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 ticket sale numbers to the most prolific movies that were ever made. Like he has information like ch -ch 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 -ch. I think he's brilliant. Yeah, he's very smart. We know you got a show tonight and you have my permission like I always give him. Please talk about me. Yeah, I, I'm more definitely. No, bad. I'm going in. Yeah, I'm going not in. bad. I'm talking about you's about to get a case gonna taste this white man. <laughs> 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 me and Kenny was like, no. No, and here you, just for a second. <laughs> Just for a second. Let me send him to Jesus for a second. That's how Dirt got fucked up. <laughs> Dirt left eye don't work to this day. <laughs> <laughs> I love you, cuz. All right, I appreciate it, cuz. Yep, I owe you a bro. You know how we do, Twism. Yes, sir. Let's get it. Yeah. But we're at Disney, so we can literally hear the roller coasters and shit like. Eh.